Somebody said Barbara cheated on Pastor Sylvester Ofori. Pastor Sylvester Ofori, is it true? Why? What causes Barbara, if indeed Barbara cheated on Pastor Ofori? What were the reason? Why did Barbara cheat on Pastor Ofori? That is my question. Why? Is it that uh, Pastor Ofori never had time for her? Was he also cheating? To know that the abusive person seems to be very, very innocent, calm and nice outside. But they are wolf in sheep clothing, especially when they are men of God or women of God. It is difficult to identify abusers. They are everywhere, everywhere in the home, school, church, everywhere. But church own. Most of, of most of them hide under the scripture, church not my anointed word and do my perfect no harm. And they are doing harm and wickedness. Hello, viewer, hello, and welcome to Funny Fine TV. If you are new here, please consider to subscribe, like, and share my video. Well, um, if you've not yet subscribed, please consider to subscribe. What are you waiting for? Well, this is the response video on a video that I did titled um, Why Ghanaian Pastor Sylvester Ofori Shot His Wife. All right, somebody wrote on the comment section, uh, keep watching. Till the end of this video, um, there are very interesting things that I'll be discussing in this video. The person says, please go into the matter what the wife did. I don't endorse him killing. She also cheated with the choir master. So this was the response of this um, viewer. Yes, um, let's go to the Bible. Hebrews 13 verse 4 says, marriage should be honorable by all and the married bed kept pure for god will judge all the adulterer and all the sexual immorality keep your lives free from the love of mourning and be content with what you have ah huh? now hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 it's based on marriage it's talking about marriage right um that marriage is honorable and the bed should be on the fire. That is the wish of God. That is what he said. And that is what he desires us to do. That the married bed should be kept holy. Now let's look at the incident that took place between um, Pastor Sylvester and Barbara. The late Barbara. So my question was, why did he kill Barbara? Why? Does anybody have the right to take another person's life? No. And the law is there. So, the main issue, as of what um, some people are saying now, that Barbara had sexual affairs outside marriage. Hmm. But according to the video that is circulating on social media, we see and heard bluntly from the mouth of Pastor Sylvester that if he don't kill Barbara, it means he's fake. And also, on the other hand, he said that a pastor said, Barbara is a witch. That's what he told the brother. So if that was what he told the brother, if he was engaged in immorality, I'm telling you, that man would have been so, so blown to tell the brother on the, right on his face that this is your immoral sister. I'm not justifying Barbara because I don't know what happened. It's a marriage. Something was have, must have gone wrong before we saw what happened on Tuesday. But the point is, the way Pastor Sylvester Fury was very, very angry and blonde, the way you can see him, he's not somebody that will keep something in his mind. He would, he would have said it. Maybe along the proceedings of the case, he will say it. But as for now, the comment that Barbara committed adultery with the choir master, if that is what she did, so they are already in a divorce process. Or he can have the right to divorce. And I believe he will be granted divorce if he 
would have said, I'm divorcing Barbara because of immorality. And I believe the court would have looked into it. And that's a legal ground to divorce anybody, even in scripture. But in this matter, it's just hearsay, hearsay for now. But let's say Barbara was involved in extramarital affairs. Yes, it is wrong. It is really, really wrong according to what scripture says. But do you know that most pastors don't have good relationship with their wives? Some of them only come outside and make public show, as I said in my last video. When you look at the life of Barbara, you will see that she was a well-educated woman, compassionate, well-behaved, and people speak well of her. The eyewitness, Lisa, he said that whenever she comes to the bank, Barbara was very nice. And from what is going around on social media, Barbara, why did Barbara not report the matter? He didn't want his brothers to report the matter, his family members to report the matter. Or she herself reporting the matter. She said she did not want Sylvester to be deported. What a kind-hearted woman. What a compassionate woman. This was Barbara's response. She was Even going through violence, domestic violence. And she was educated enough to have gone to the police station and report the matter. But she never reported the matter. She was protecting the husband. So what a kind-hearted woman. But on the other hand, Pastor Sylvester did not even think about the kindness that this woman is doing. That, oh, if she would have gone and reported me, they would have deported him because he don't have the correct paper, according to news. The post, Dr. Bernard Taylor. Let me just try to read um, what um, was written by him. I told Barbara on Monday evening to report Sylvester to the police for a court restraining order against him after he choked her on Sunday. If not the intervention from her brother, she was going to she she was going to die on that day. Also, with so many death threats from him, she said, "Papa, he doesn't have his citizenship yet." Hence, I don't want to hurt him. Oh my goodness. They may revoke it. Hence, I don't want to hurt him. Let me continue. Now, he killed her in less than 12 hours afterwards. Shot his life. Sometimes the people you are sympathizing with and caring for and being so generous towards may be the very one to kill you if care is not taken. She said, I don't want to hurt him. Can you imagine? I don't want to hurt him. He has just wasted the life of this woman. But thank God, the matter is in court. And from report, Pastor Sylvester might face death penalty and also 145 years imprisonment. He found guilty, according to the law. So we must be very careful. Let's say Barbara committed. This was Barbara's response. Uh, Do you know what was happening? To report the matter to the police. 
if Barbara can wake up now from the dead, she will tell you some amazing things that will blow your mind. That maybe she was in that marriage, the man was not even touching her, not even paying attention to her, to her needs, her emotional needs. Or maybe even sleeping in another room. Some pastors are doing that. They will leave their wife and be sleeping in another room. And then they come to the church the next day, carry on with the mic as if nothing is happening. Let us be careful. I don't know what led Barbara to do that according to what you are saying. But if that was it, I'm telling you, if you investigate well, there were a lot of domestic violence that was taking place. Domestic violence, not just when you are beating a person physically or whatever. Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you believe that somebody must be killed because she was caught in adultery, even Jesus himself say, if you have no sin, you'll be the first to stone this woman. And as you are watching this video, do you think that pastor's wife should begin to come out and report domestic violence? Or should they keep it under the carpet as if nothing is happening? What lesson have you learned in this incident? Because now today, Barbara is being accused of sleeping around. If really she was sleeping around, does that give him the right to kill her? Why did he just go to the court and ask for divorce on the grounds of marital unfaithfulness? But he took the law into his own hand. And he actually planned and premeditated it. As he said, if I don't kill your sister, then I'm fake. My question is, should men of God prove their genuity through killing? Or to say, if I don't do this, then I'm this. Second Kings chapter 1, verse 12 says, if I am a man of God, Elijah replied, May fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. So he said, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you. But not if I am a man of God, if I don't kill you or if I don't kill your sister. Then I am thick. Elijah was saying this to glorify God. And it was God himself who sent the consuming fire to consume the 50 men. Why did he call on God to come and consume Barbara? But rather, he took the gun and shot the lady seven times. If indeed Barbara was a witch, why didn't he pray as he used to pray for other people? Why didn't he allow God to intervene and deliver his wife? This is the thing that I am saying. That most pastors make their wives as enemies. They see them as the demon who don't want them to progress. Or who wants to destroy the church. Which of course, some of them, their attitude are very, very ungodly. They will be sleeping around, doing all sorts of things. And then funnily, you will see some blind members justifying the pastors. Especially female members. They will be defending the pastors just because some of them want to be first lady. Pastor's wife. Please. Let this be a lesson. If you are going through domestic violence. Let people know. Because tomorrow. They will turn it around against you. 
the very members will join, some of them will join the pastor against you to accuse you. And these are the things that they normally accuse the pastor's wife of food. They will accuse you of witchcraft. You don't want the church to grow. They will accuse you of adult fornication. When they we are in it, sleeping with the church members all over the place. And they will cover them. So share your thoughts in the comment section. If Pastor Ophore was right to kill Babla, because she was sleeping with the choir master, allegedly. Till we meet in the next video. God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my video. Bye-bye.